Hey everybody, Dave Basulto, FilmmakingCentral.com. I'm in Premiere Pro CS 5.5, the new release from Adobe. Uh, I think it's a really, a, a, it's more of a full upgrade for me than a point upgrade, uh, even though I'm coming from CS 5, because there's so many new cool things to use and time savers in, in this release that I really have been raving about it. Uh, I've been lucky enough to be on the beta testing of it and uh, just finished a new features course at lynda.com and let me just pull that up really quick <clears throat> here it is you go over to lynda.com Premiere Pro CS 5.5 new features I walk you through everything that's new um, and you'll really dig the stuff that's new I'm telling you right now but let's take a look so uh, Premiere Pro of course they upgraded their Mercury engine which was just amazing in CS5 kind of mind-blowing we were able to just put all kinds of different uh, footage in the timeline and mix and mash, and it all played well together. Here uh, in their demo assets, these are all Adobe demo assets. I would be, I would love to be making a medieval movie, but I'm not. Uh, so you, here I've got uh, some footage on top. I've got some new Canon MXF files in there, and I'm just scrubbing through like nothing's going on. and it's composited and everything and this is just a four wall view but very cool stuff it's just blazing fast for those of you who are new to Premiere Pro and haven't seen my previous tutorials you can also and I actually I would recommend it uh, if you go into the program monitor and right click you can change the playback resolution uh, to full uh, to, from full to one quarter all the way down to one sixteenth depending on the type of footage you have um, so if you've got an older machine and it's not uh, with the new CUDA cards or you know any all the bells and whistles and you need to still edit uh, large uh, format footage, you can certainly downgrade to 1 16th playback. What that does is allows you to play back at that resolution, but when it's paused, it'll stay at full. You can also lower that as well. And it doesn't mean that once you cut it, it's going to be that resolution. It's still going to stay full resolution. It's just while we're playing back. Uh, it just saves your computer some, uh, you know, headaches, and especially if you don't have the powerful computer to run that. So that was a cool thing. Uh, upgrades in the Mercury Engine, making it faster. Adobe Story is fantastic. And for those of you who don't know Adobe Story, I'm sorry, let me go back there. And we'll choose Adobe Story. And if you go to story.adobe.com, it's a free uh, service. Uh, until April 12th of 2012 and I have no idea how much it's going to cost after that but certainly right now you can use it free uh, you can bring in your final cut uh, I'm sorry final draft uh, your final draft or your movie magic uh, screenwriting programs all those scripts you can bring in docs bring them into Adobe Story and then you can go back into Premiere and you can select a clip, right click, and you can um, attach data to it. So let me find one I was using earlier, um, uh, some footage, I think it was this one. If I right click on it, let me see, where was that? Oh, I think it's this one, this is it. So if I right click on my footage, and I'll clear the script data right now. Uh, one of the things you need to do is add scene numbers. I explain all of this um, in other tutorials, but I'll just go briefly over it. You right click here, attach a script file, and if you go into your script files, uh, Adobe Story spits out an ASTX file format from your script. All you need to do is click on it, uh, I'm sorry, click on it and open. And now if I double click on this footage and go into the metadata, it's all there. Um, so you can actually attach multiple clips, um, um, so Adobe Story Script to multiple clips, especially if they're the same scene or whatever. Uh, so you can, you know, search for them later. Uh, it's a great, great uh, addition to Premiere Pro CS 5.5, and like I said, I'm doing a full tutorial on that um, in another video. Uh, another thing that I think is fantastic is the ability. Uh, let me find something. Uh, I shoot with the Canon 7D quite a bit, um, and we use the Rode mic, or we use um, the 
external microphone systems, and I can't think of it right now. What the heck is the name of it? Anyway, <laughs> uh, we use an external mic to capture the audio because, of course, you know the 7D is crappy. Um, but if you, so you bring all that in because we're using different types of, uh, of audio when you shoot uh, with, with DSLRs. Um, and you're going to have tons of audio tracks. Well, new in CS 5.5. You can have one video track and sync it with up to 16 audio tracks and then create one merged clip. Um, so that one clip is all you need to take along with you. It'll have all the metadata from all the audio channels and you can pick and choose what you want. Instead of having this massive uh, audio file with all these different things, you can have one merged clip. Um, and I go into that in further detail in my um, Linda class. Um, another huge thing for me is, um, and I'll just use this one as an example, um, the ability to go into my footage and right click and go into my show clip keyframes and do a position keyframe. Oh, I better grab my, my point tool, pen tool, and I can start keyframing uh, in my timeline. Oh, that's actually not a file. It's something different. It's my export to Audition, so it's not going to work. I can go into my file here and add keyframes and keyframe everything. And how cool is that? I mean, it's, it works on all the effects, etc. Once again, I do my lynda.com course uh, goes into this uh, from every aspect. Um, the other thing is we can go export. Um, let me find, let's, let's use this massive file. So now I can go back in um, and let's say I want to do my audio fixes. I can send my entire sequence, not just, and you, you, many of you know, if you, if you click on something and I right click and say send it to uh, Adobe Sound Booth, which you see right here, you can do that. But in, uh, in CS 5.5, I can go file, um, uh, X, no, I'm sorry, uh, edit, edit in Adobe Audition and send the entire sequence to do audio fixes and then round trip it back into Premiere. Um, so that's absolutely fantastic. Um, there's a lot of other cool things, including uh, the red um, dialog box to do non-destructive stuff for red footage. Um, and I'll show, uh, that's actually in my Linda course. Also, the new revamped media encoder is fantastic with watch folders. And you can actually drag and drop files in here from here, from your uh, project panel. So it's fantastic. Uh, I invite you to take a look at Premiere Pro CS 5.5 at adobe.com. Download a free demo and check out my lynda.com course, which is right here. Uh, and basically, it's, uh, it's 27 minutes long and it's going to get you up to speed on what's new. And we're actually working on a more advanced uh, course uh, using the whole CS 5.5 suite and, of course, Premiere and After Effects, etc. So check it out. I hope this helps uh, talk, uh, make you think about upgrading or getting into Premiere Pro. If you have any questions, please email me uh, through filmmakingcentral.com. And uh, thanks a lot. Appreciate your time and have a great weekend.